but not you. No, not me. I'm a rancher. I use a gun for hunting animals, not men. The untold truth about Chuck Connors. Chuck Connors was an American actor and professional baseball and basketball player, born on the 10th of April 1921 in Brooklyn, New York City, USA. He's undoubtedly best known for his memorable role in the TV series The Rifleman and the movie Old Yeller. Kevin Joseph Aloysius Connors was the only son of Marcella and Albin Connors, Irish immigrants via Newfoundland and Labrador. His father obtained his American citizenship in 1914 and his mother in 1930. The 1930s Great Depression left his father unemployed for years and his mother became the backbone of the family by working in office buildings scrubbing floors. This resulted in Kevin and his younger sister Gloria growing up facing the harshness of poverty. A simple reminder how to enter our brand new giveaway. We will be giving away either iPhone Max, iPad Mini or MacBook Pro. It's really your choice. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, subscribe and turn on notifications to enter the giveaway. It's really that simple. In his childhood and following his family's Roman Catholic tradition, Connors became an altar boy in Sunset Park School Our Lady of Perpetual Health Basilica, which he also attended. From childhood, Connors showed amazing physical prowess and talent in various sports, a skill that gained him a spot to play in the local baseball team, Bay Ridge Celtics, and where he met coach John Flynn, who helped Connors to gain a scholarship to attend Adelphi Academy. Besides playing football and basketball during his high school years, Connors became a valuable asset for its baseball team and allegedly received numerous scholarship offers to attend colleges. He finally chose Seton Hall University in New Jersey, where he played in both the college's basketball and baseball teams. It's rumored that Kevin changed his name during his college years because he disliked his first name, Kevin. According to a story told by his sister Nancy in 1997, Connors decided to adopt a name he thought would be suitable for him, trying with various nicknames such as Lefty, stretch, before finally settling on Chuck, which originated from the custom phrase he would yell from his first base position to the pitcher, Chuck it to me baby, Chuck it to me. However, other sources contradict this rumor, and even Connor said something different in 1945. They called me Chuck when I started playing baseball because they thought Kevin was effeminate. So the year he started being known as Chuck is undisclosed. Connors had been an avid fan of the now disappeared Brooklyn Dodgers since his childhood. His dream of joining the team became a reality in 1940 when he signed a contract to play with them in minor leagues, leaving his studies aside in favor of baseball. However, his stay with the Dodgers was short-lived as he was assigned to a Class D league in Arkansas. In 1941, he signed with the Norfolk Tars of the Piedmont League playing 72 games with them during his one-year stay. On the 20th of October 1942, Connors left the league to enlist in the U.S. Army to serve his country during World War II. He was located at Fort Campbell in Kentucky as an instructor in tank warfare and was officially discharged in 1946. After the war ended, Chuck Connors went back to sports, though he didn't return to baseball right away and instead played in the National Basketball League's NBL team, the Rochester Royals, participating in 14 games with them until his exit in March that year, going back to baseball to train with the New York Yankees. After winning the National Baseball Minor League with the Yankees junior team, Connors was transferred to the Brooklyn Dodgers and joined its farm club in Newport, Virginia. With this team, he earned a good reputation and became one of the prime prospects to form part of the main Dodgers team. In the fall of 1946, Connors returned to his other career joining the Basketball Association of America and signing with the newly formed Boston Celtics. However, his role in the team wasn't that promising. I'm positive my greatest value to the Celtics was as an after-dinner speaker. It seems to me I did more public speaking for the team than playing that first season. They sent me all over New England on speaking engagements. Despite this, Connors would always be remembered as a legend of the National Basketball Association (NBA) for being the first player to shatter a backboard. In 1947, Connors left basketball for good after noticing that he was losing physical condition for baseball. I had to leave the Celtics in late February for spring training and figured I was in great shape because I had been running around the boards all winter. But because of that, I found my legs were actually much tougher to get into condition. I think my baseball legs were bothered very much by my basketball. Back with the Brooklyn Dodgers, Connors was sent to play in its class AA team, Mobile, in Alabama slowly ascending the league chain, which led him to be assigned to play in a top club in Montreal. 
Although his efforts were compensated by winning the International League, he wasn't close to becoming a first baseman with the Dodgers. His playful and comedic nature helped him though, earning a good image with the media that executives thought would be a positive for the team. Thus, this led him to become a Dodgers first baseman in 1949. During one of his first games with the team, he was hit in the mouth by a ball and taken to hospital. This accident cost him two exhibition games and a third one lost. Ultimately, Connors was put on the bench by the coach's decision. Shortly after this event, executives took the decision to transfer Connors to the farm team Los Angeles Angels, which resulted in his favor, as in California, he met various producers, directors, and other people in the entertainment industry. During his time playing with the Angels, Connors received a call from director Bill Grady to be tested for a small role in Pat and Mike. This served Connors well, as he felt that he'd found his next career. I said right then, this is my racket. Playing with Tracy and Hepburn, I was in the big league much faster than I arrived there in baseball. Although he continued playing baseball, his acting appearances continued to increase, and by 1952, he had roles in various movies, which provided him with a better income than his career in sports. In 1953, he officially left baseball, though he was always grateful for what it gave him. Baseball owes me nothing. I owe it all that I have, and much of what I hope to have. Baseball made my entrance to the film industry immeasurably easier than I could have made it alone. To the greatest game in the world, I shall be eternally in debt. In his acting career, Connors appeared in several movies, including Move Over Darling, Soylent Green, and Flipper. He also became a recurrent TV actor, with roles in series such as Dear Phoebe, Hey Genie, and Here's Lucy. However, there were two roles that cemented his career in Hollywood. First, he appeared as Burn Sanderson in the Disney movie Old Yeller in 1958 a character which won viewers' hearts and led him to be cast in the starring role as Lucas McCain in The Rifleman. The popular Western series ran for five years, from 1958 to 1963, and would be the most widely recognized acting work of his career. In his personal life, Connors married for the first time in 1948 to Elizabeth Riddell, who he met at a baseball game. The couple had four sons together, Michael, Jeffrey, Stephen, and Kevin, but ultimately filed for divorce in 1961. In 1963, Connors married Kamala Devi, his co-star in Geronimo. The couple didn't have any children and divorced in 1973. That year, Connors met actress Faith Cabius during the filming of Soylent Green, and they married four years later. However, the union was short-lived and they filed for divorce in 1979. Connors' last publicly known romantic relationship was with Rose Mary Grumley, who was with him until he died. On the 10th of November 1992, Connors died in a Los Angeles medical center as a result of complications related to lung cancer, an illness resulting from his decades-long habit of smoking, although he gave it up in 1972. At the time of his passing, Chuck Connors had an estimated net worth of $5 million as a result of his career as an actor and as a professional basketball and baseball player. Physically, Chuck Connors was a man of white, American ethnicity. His impressive stature and defined facial features gave him a tough-looking appearance. He was 6 feet 6 inches or 1.98 meters tall, though his weight is unknown. His hair was dark brown and his eyes were blue. A few other facts about Connors are that he was interested in charity and founded his own Chuck Connors Charitable Foundation. He was a Republican Party supporter, developing a close friendship with Richard Nixon and campaigning for Ronald Reagan, a former colleague in the acting profession. Connors met Soviet Union's leader Leonid Brezhnev in 1973 and gifted him two Colt 6 guns. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.